Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Andrea here with Dental L Tutoring. I will be hosting a webinar this Friday evening. So that is tomorrow, depending on when you're watching the video, but this will be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'll leave you guys the link at the end of the webinar, um, or I should say at the end of this video on how to sign up for that. Everybody is more than welcome to come. This will be how to pick the best answer for when you take your quality assurance exam. The exam is not easy. It's not impossible though either. You do have to study for it, but I'm going to be teaching you guys how to pick the best answer because on the exam, two answers are typically always going to be correct. But in order to get the right answer, you do need to pick the best answer. So think back when you were in dental hygiene college and you would have you know, multiple choice exams all the time and you had to pick the best answer, it's basically like that. So if you've been out of school for a number of years, five, 10, 20 years, it doesn't matter how long, taking tests, taking exams will probably be very new to you. So I will teach you guys how to do exactly that. If you didn't know yet, I do have a quality assurance exam study course online. If you haven't signed up for that, you can. I offer you complete um, quality assurance exam prep. So I give you all the modules, everything that you need to study for the exam. So you don't necessarily have to buy a textbook again. But in the video today, I want to kind of give you two questions. So I just have two questions on how to pick the best answer, just sort of a practice test here for all of you guys, but definitely um, feel free to be a part of the webinar tomorrow night if you want to hear more questions. So I'm just gonna change my slide here. So this is a very basic question. They do get a lot harder, but I want to talk to you guys about this. If you want to read this on your own, then feel free to stop um, the video and then start it up again when you want to hear the answer. So the question is, are you required to report child abuse even if you don't have proof. So let me read the answers out to you and then we're going to discuss why one of them is the most correct and why the other one is still correct but not necessarily the most correct. So A. So no. Some form of proof is needed no matter how big or small. And then the next one. No. Under the Child, Youth and Family Services Act, 2017, you are not required, but are strongly suggested to do so. C, yes, and then as a dental hygienist, you are. D, no, you need something of reason, okay? So you might be reading this, you might be so confused already, or maybe you do know what the best answer is. So again, you guys think about it. If you need to stop the video to think about it, just push play again when you are ready to hear the answer, because I'm about to switch slides and give you the answer. Okay, so the answer is C. So it is highlighted right here. Let's read the question again. Are you required to report child abuse even if you don't have proof? Yes, we are required to do so even if we don't have proof. This is our duty as a dental hygienist. We're not talking about any other healthcare profession. We're not talking about any, anybody else here. We're talking about you yourself as a dental hygienist. This is the best answer. If you know or if you didn't know, under the Child, Youth, and Family Services Act 2017, so that is a real thing, we are required to do so even if we do not have proof. It doesn't matter. If we have a reasonable reason to think this might be happening, we need to report it. So a lot of you, so let's say if you were looking at A as the best answer here, well, that's just simply not correct because you don't need proof. So this whole answer is not correct. B is not correct because yes, we are required to do so, but it says no. The, the uh, Child, Youth and Family Services Act 2017 is a real thing, but this answer is wrong because in this act, it says we are required to do so. So having no in front of it is false. 
C is of course the right answer. And D is just simply not correct because it says no. Yes is the best answer, okay? Um, because this is just what we have to do. If you're confused on this question at all, please send me a message, let me know, and I'm more than happy to explain it further for you. So let's go through another one here. Last one for the video today, but I will be going through more questions in our um, webinar tomorrow night, which is Friday, December 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I will give you the link at the end of um, the video now to let you guys know how to sign up for that. So can the dental hygienist, so this is the next question, can the dental hygienist take radiographs when the dentist is not in the office? A very common question actually. So remember, you have to pick the, the best answer. This one is a little bit trickier. So A, no, they cannot. A dentist has to be present. The next one, yes, a client specific uh, prescription must be obtained for every radiograph taken. C, yes, but not a panoramic x-ray since this is considered not client specific. The last one, yes, only if at least one other staff member is present read through all of these, please feel free to stop the video right now if you need more time to think about it because I'm going to go through the answer right now by switching the slide. Okay, so highlighted right here, you guys, this is the correct answer. So let's read the question again. Can the dental hygienist take, um, take x-rays, take um, radiographs when the dentist is not in the office? Yes, they can but a client specific prescription must be obtained for every radiograph taken. That is the best answer. So let's go through them together. A is not correct because simply the first part says no, they cannot, but yes, we can. So we know A is not the right answer. What if you knew, yes, we can, but you don't really know the specifics. So you might've thought, okay, C might be correct, but we can't take a panoramic x-ray because it's considered not specific. Well, is that true? No, it's actually not. I just threw it in there. But if you didn't know, you might be reading this and saying, oh, I don't know. Is that the case? It sounds correct because sometimes, you know, you don't know, right? And then the last one. So this is not correct because yes, we can take them, but it doesn't matter who else is in the office. So if you didn't know, you might be reading this answer and saying, oh, well, that sounds right. Maybe we do need to have at least one other staff member. We, we always should for safety reasons, but that has nothing to do with taking x-rays and if the dentist has to be present. So does that make sense, you guys? So here's the link. Please make sure to be a part of my group here on Facebook. I'm going to post the link about half an hour prior to our webinar Friday night in this um, group here. If you're a part of it, you know what, awesome, then you don't have to do anything else. You just have to watch for my post. I'll post the link to our webinar about half an hour prior, so around 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not going to send an email, none of that. I'm just going to um, post the link here. Okay, you guys, so what I'll be talking about at our webinar is more questions such as the ones that I have just done of how to pick the best answer. And if you have any questions on the quality assurance exam, please let me know. There will be plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, the webinar will be about one hour long. It might not even be that long. It depends on how many questions we have. And, you know, if there's any questions after the questions that I talk about, it might take a little more time. But I do have everything booked for one hour for us to go through the best answer, how to pick the best answer, because this is a very common you know, hard spot for a lot of people. You might know what the answer is, but then you, but then if you go through the multiple choice answers, oh my goodness, they all sound correct, or maybe two of them sound correct, it gets very confusing. So let me teach you guys how to pick the best answer so you pass the first time your quality assurance exam. So I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow evening at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I might have said 8.30, sorry, did I say 8.30? I meant 8 p.m. I might have said 8.30 earlier, but it is 8 p.m. Eastern time. I will see you guys tomorrow and I look forward to seeing everybody there and bring along any questions that you might have because we want you to pass that quality assurance exam the first time. Okay, you guys, well, thank you so much and have a nice evening.